Are we on? Past. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. If you guys will stand with me, let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. Uh, Psalm 22, verse 3, 4, and 5. Verse 3, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted in you, delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Lord, you are enthroned on our praises. And we just want to give you glory, Lord. As it is Father's Day, Lord, it's the day uh, our culture has decided we're going to celebrate fathers, so we want to celebrate you, Father. And we love you, Lord. First thing this morning, first thing on my heart this morning was happy Father's Day, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. How blessed we are to have a father that loves us. How blessed are we, Lord, to have a father who sits on a throne of fire and pursues us, pursues our family, pursues my heart, pursues the heart of my children who desires to walk in the room. So we just give you glory, Father. We lift you on high, and we want to just worship you today, Lord. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
presence, all our fears are washed away, they're washed away.
stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Worship Him now, how great, how awesome is He. Together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord. Oh, 
There's a name that levels mountains Carves out highways through the sea I've seen its power unravel battles Right in front of me There's a faith that stands defiant Sends Goliath to his knees I've seen as praise unravel shadows There's a hope that calls out courage In the furnace and afraid The kind of daring expectation Every prayer I make Is on an empty grave That's the power of your name Just a mention makes a way Giants fall and strongholds break And there is healing that's the power that I claim It's the same that rolled the grave There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus I see you taken ground I see you press ahead Your power is dangerous to the enemy's camp You still do miracles You will do what you said For you're the same God now as you've always been I see you taking ground I see you press ahead Your power is dangerous to the enemy's camp You still do miracles you will do what you said, for you're the same God now as you've always been. Your spirit's breaking out, your kingdom moving in, your victory claims the ground that the enemy has. You still do miracles, you will do what you said, for you're the same God now as you've always been. Your spirit, your spirit breaking out. Your kingdom moving in, your victory claims the ground that the enemy had, yes. You still do miracles, you will do what you said, for you're the same God now as you've always been. That's the power of your name, just a mention makes a way, giants fall and strongholds break and there is healing. That's the power that I claim, it's the same that rolls a grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. That's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall and strongholds break and there is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We release the power of your spirit to do whatever you desire to do. We give you permission to do whatever you want to do today. We ask that you would speak to hearts, make breakthrough for those who need breakthrough, bring healing to those who need healing. May the spirit of restoration be released here today and throughout our city. I ask that the power of your kingdom would come forth today in ways that we've never seen. I ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone would say, amen. amen. Good morning, everyone.
and his schemes. Our schools filled with light by the children of light. Lord, as we make this proclamation, we desire a baptism of your love and fire that changes the atmosphere wherever we go, that the gospel of Christ Jesus be preached. Hallelujah. Blessing time. Offering time. Bless the Lord and each other. Amen. Happy Father's Day.
holding on to me. God is holding on. When the night is holding on to me, God is holding on. When the night is holding on
Let me, I'm going to wait a moment, and um, I'm going to wait for uh, the director to direct me, make sure it goes like this, or action, roll. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things today. Um, I gave I gave uh, two sermons last week, so I thought, why not do it again this week? Um, you know. Yeah, well, you're not working this week, right? So you're just full of it. Okay. I'd like to give a testimony of the Lord. Okay, is anybody okay with that? Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm going to want some class participation, okay? Okay, all right. I know this side will. I'm worried about this side over here. Why? Great. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Hi, Leslie, how you doing? I wouldn't do it to you, Leslie. No, it's not my, t right, Kenny, I can't do that. No, not my testimony. I'll give my testimony, okay? Anyway, a um, couple questions I need to ask participation. Do you, everybody believe that the drought has been broken yes. physically? Yes. Okay, we got, okay, all right, all right. Do everybody believe it was the blessing of God and not just, yes, okay, yeah, okay. It, it wasn't by luck, right? Okay, all right. It wasn't like somebody went to the casino and said, drought me broken through dice, okay? That wasn't it, okay. So therefore, on Monday, Chris and I went for a drive to my old hometown and got out of life, praise God. Didn't run into anybody I knew. Didn't get in trouble. Well, I did, but. Um, and I wanted to go bless the Lord for the rain, okay? And I uh, <clears throat> drove to Orville and found my way to the dam and got on top of the dam and and there's a place where you can park and then you can walk out onto the dam, okay? And um, I wanted to take communion with the Lord and uh, I will do that, Lord, in a second. And um, he, he reminded me of something, okay? Um, I wanted to read scripture over the lake and it's full to the brim and the water spilling and it's just beautiful. And so we walk out, and it was somewhat overcast, and we walk a ways, and I'm going along, and all of a sudden I go, oh, man, I forgot my eyeglasses. And so I didn't want to walk back, because I was walking with somebody like this, okay? And, and um, so we sat down, on, looking over the lake, and we began to worship and play some worship music and sing, and... and um, I wanted to read scripture. So on the way out there, when Kristen realized I couldn't see, she said, I'll read it. Okay. And um, so what I'm going to want you to do right now, if you really believe it was God that broke the drought, if you really believe it was the mercy of God, just stand up. Thank you. Okay. So I'm agree with you. So I'm gonna read this scripture over that water that was I, this beautiful lake, and realize I grew up there. And I'm pointing out, hey, I killed a buck on that hill over there, and um, you know. So I opened my Bible to where I wanted to read, and so I opened my Bible. As of right now, I can't see a stinking word, okay, because I need to wear glasses. But remember, I forgot my glasses. And then I start to read, because I forget to have Kristen to read. And I read without my glasses. I could see the words perfectly. 
and I didn't really get it because I'm kind of I got a short brick somewhere. It's kind of off after I got my concussion, and and I didn't even think about it. Okay, until Tuesday night, I'm sharing the testimony, and I'm looking at the scripture, and I took off my glasses and went, I can't see, and I realized that God opened my spiritual eyes and my physical eyes to see if if I wasn't old man blind. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a proclamation because then I have a, a prayer group that I pray with. The man leads it in Florida. Um, and I give testimony like I gave you. And then he gave me a prophetic word after my testimony. He, he said, John, I believe the Lord is telling me that as you saw without glasses and you could see clearly, he says, now the Lord says, what you read, read and prayed, now you shall see also with your natural eyes. And this is what I read. Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I'll send you grain, new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. But I will remove far from you the northern army and will drive him away in a barren, desolate land. With his face towards the eastern sea, his back toward the western sea, his stench will come up and his foul order will rise because he's done monstrous things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beast of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. But to be glad then, you children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. Amen? Amen. And he will now cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts had eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I'm the Lord your God. There's no other. My people shall never be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterwards. I will pour my, out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. And also my men servants, on my maiden servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming and grateful, awesome day of the Lord. It shall come to pass, that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, on, and for Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be a deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom... The Lord calls. Can I get an amen? Amen. This is what I could see. This is what I read. This is what I prayed. And it's going to begin to happen. Because when I came back into town, I met with a couple. And they got saved and did not know the Lord. And they got delivered at the same time. The fruit of it happened that quick. Amen. Amen. And I still can't see without my glasses to read. You can sit down, please. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Should I? I love it when new people show up. You know what I'm saying? I just love it. It's like I get to hear heaven and I read the mail. Yes, yes. Yes, I, I messed up my, my ears. I get to, actually God was dropping mail today. Okay. It was kind of a weird mail message, but it just kept coming and coming. And then after I got the message, 
the darkness attacked me really hard. And I had to rebuke it, and I said, go. Welcome, Megan. <laughs> it's good to have you. Such a smiley face. You know what, can I tell you something I think the Lord showed me about you? You sure? You, I, you have my permission? It's kind of, kind of wild. Yeah, I thought that the Lord says, I'm here to protect you and your season of fear is over. Kleenex, please. Um, the terror is going to be pushed away from you, okay? There's going to be divine protection put around you in this season. Um, I saw something I, I didn't, I've never seen the movie, but it was a really scary movie. And I had to ask my wife about it. And some of you younger ones might know it, but it was like the movie that the creature was called It. <laughs> and this It was after you. And it was scary. But the Lord said, do not fear anymore. I've heard you cry. You're going to be protected. And, yeah. And uh, that nightmare is going to be over. Matter of fact, it's begun right now because he said you decide to turn around and go the other direction and says, I'm just done being done. I'm not who they say I am. And the Lord says, today I have now placed my angels around you. In Jesus' name. Megan, does that make any sense to your life? Yeah. I usually I have to prophesy to her at that. Have you, ever, have you ever seen those things you can put on your chest like a label and you can write? Cool beans. <laughs> what did you say, hon? I don't have to remember it. It came from God and God spoke it again. Because God has not changed. Okay. God has not changed his mind about you. You ran from the word, he said, because you couldn't believe it could be me. And now he says it's time to quit believing what others say and believe what I've spoken in your heart. Oh, this is even better. And he said, <laughs> on this Father Day, I want to be your father. And remove the curse in Jesus' name. Just think, Megan, you didn't get the bad one like she did. <laughs> How y'all doing? Jesus is on the throne. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Whew. 
if you knew how upset that dark guy was about Orville and Monday, it's been quite a journey all week for me. And um, he's not happy that the chains are beginning to break off of people, okay? And um, just be faithful. Just don't allow something to push you away again, he might say. So I guess I'll start my second passage, Jackie. Acts chapter 9. You ready? Chosen. That's the name of the book, the sermon today. Chosen. Are you guys ready? Uh, Dan's ready. We've got to start again. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I asked you to get everybody ready. <laughs> Wake them up. May the coffee they drank at seven take kick in again, Lord. Whatever it is, may it come. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you ready? Yes. There you go. Tell me prayer doesn't work. Amen? <laughs> I'm getting drunk right now. Praise God. Okay, chapter 9, verse 10. You ready? Oh, you're learning. (laughs) Now, there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, he said, here am I. Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, arise and go to the street called Straight. Inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tars. For behold, he is praying. And in the vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from about many about this man, how much harm he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he here and here he has authority over from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered his house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, he felt the me there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he rose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Remember what started this. Saul's walking down the road. He's going to go arrest Christians. He's going to throw them in jail. He's been killing Christians. He kind of was not on Jesus' side. And he had the encounter on the road to Damascus outside Jerusalem. And you remember last week we talked about how Jesus said, don't quit, kick against the goats. In other words, I'm working on you. Quit running from what I'm doing to bring me to you. And so he went. And after he got up after that encounter with the Lord, he was blind. So he had to be led by hand, and he's sitting down. And I'm going to let you know, as you look at this right now, that a street called Straight, you realize there's still a street in Damascus called Straight. It's a three-mile street, okay? And even in it, there's a place where they believe Paul was there, and they have a closet they say they think he stood in and prayed in, those three days. Historically, it is marked out. Whether that's the house, many believe it is. So here we go. Ananias says, hold it, Lord. You want me to go meet up with the guy who's killing Christians. Okay? So let's zoom it up 2,000 years. You want me to go talk to people who hate God. Is that what you want me to do, Lord? Are you serious? He's serious. So Ananias has, you know, many know who he was. He was a devout Jew, lawful. We'll talk about in Scripture in a little bit. 
he was in, remembered as one who was very faithful to the law, but a converted Jew. They don't believe he was converted in Jerusalem, but in Damascus. So here's this man, knows that the bad guy's on the way to get him. All right? And then the Lord speaks. What I like is, he heard his name and he said, here I am, Lord. The first thing we got to do in our walk with God is when he's speaking to us, acknowledge him. <laughs> okay? Sometimes we don't want to acknowledge because we might be afraid what he might ask us to do. Was that really you, Lord? There's no one else in the room when I... I'm here all by myself. Why am I here in my... Oh, I've lost my marbles, and it can't be God. But what if it is? And I'm worshiping here this morning, and there was this conflict going over me over the word I was supposed to give Megan. And I'm... This thing says, don't you give it. Don't you give it. And I'm getting physical pain. Don't you give it. And I'm praying, and Ray, all of a sudden... I thought one of the little ragamuffins had escaped hostage and being contained, and I felt something go on my side. So I did, I opened my eyes at what little varmint did it, right? <laughs> <laughs> there was nobody there. Nobody there. You know what your mind does, you know, you know what I'm saying, Jack? You know what mind does. Oh, my God. What did I have for breakfast? What did, did I really feel that? Did I really know? You know? We begin right away. Instead of knowing that I know no one touched me, but something brushed me a couple times. And then that critter left me alone. And I said, ah, oh, I got a guy standing with me right here, an angel. He's protecting me. When you hear the voice of God... Whatever it might be, and he says your name, just say, here I am, Lord. What opened the door for Ananias to hear God was that he was willing to listen. You know what happens when you listen to someone in authority? You know then that authority is going to want you to maybe do something. So the best way not to get yourself into a bind with the Lord is not to listen. Yeah, I'm not sure that was God, you know. Then he comes back again. I'm just giving you a clue. He'll come back again and he'll go, Brandon. Man, uh, that must be my dad telling me to get off, get on that roof and get that thing done. It's got, it can't be, you know, I must be thinking this stuff up. See, we have a supernatural God who wants to communicate to his kids, and that's what he does. But we live so much in a natural world that we don't grab onto the supernatural, and it's not real, oh, weird. He just said, Ananias, hmm. I'm assuming you might have been praying. Here I am. And then comes the commission. Arise and go to the street called Straight. Oh, I know that, he says. Inquire at the house of Judas for the one called Saul of Tars. Behold, he is praying. Bingo. Nope. I didn't hear God. That can't be God because why would God send me the one who's going to kill me? Hear it? We right away begin to orchestrate in our natural mind what God wouldn't do. He wouldn't, okay? I, I can give, kind of give a testimony to that. February 20th, 1987, long before some of you were born, I had gotten saved publicly in December, I mean June, I accepted the Lord in my bedroom in November, and I started going to church January 11th. And about a month or so later, I was at church, at evening church, hearing a sermon 
about, he's saying, this guy goes, you know, Lord can do anything. He talked about this woman being healed in a wheelchair and the church being restored. And it was a great service. And I'm sitting there and I, I felt hands pick me up out of the pew because this is what he said. You know, God can do anything. Up, the Holy Spirit picked me up. I went forward. Got on my knees. He gets down on my face. He goes, what do you want to do? What do you want? I said, I don't want to smoke no more pot. I don't want to drink no more alcohol. I don't want to snort no more drugs. I want the monkey off my back. Now, I had confessed Christ, but I was still puffing on some weed. What was amazing, I was drinking. Now, some of you guys don't know this because none of you have ever used drugs here. But I was smoking some good Humboldt weed, skunk weed, okay? And I couldn't get high on it. $40 a quarter. It, duh, stupid. You know what I'm saying? I got delivered. He wouldn't let me get high. So I go and I ask. I, ask, I want to be delivered. And he said, no problem. And then I began, like all of us are going to do right now in a moment. Well, you know, uh, Pastor, um, you understand. I like that part. Don't you like it when we tell God or the men of God who are ready to pray for you? But you don't understand. He goes, what? I've been high on something just about every day since I was 18. That's about 15 years. He said, no, sir, you don't understand. I go, understand what? Jesus can do everything. And in unbelief, probably, I said, fine. In my attitude, do it. Next thing I know, the Holy Ghost falls on me. I'm weeping. I'm bawling. Demons are coming out of me. I'm bouncing on the altar. I'm screaming. I'm wailing. The whole church I was in was going, because they didn't do that there, okay? They hadn't seen deliverance like that. So I get up off the stage. I had a daughter in seventh grade. She's underneath the pew, hiding, embarrassed. Oh, my God, my dad freaked out. Look at him, right? So I get up off the floor, and, it, you know, it's a Sunday night, time for pie and ice cream in the church basement. So I'm walking down the stairs at this church. <clears throat> this is how stubborn, I got a thick head right here, okay? Don't agree too quickly, Pastor. And so I stop and I said to him, Lord, why didn't you let me die as a baby? I have all this pain in my heart, all the surgeries I went through, all the pain I've ever had all my life. It would have been nice just to go to heaven at 13 months. How stupid is that? I just got delivered of drugs by the power of God, not really recognizing it was God even then. I said, so why didn't you? So I asked God a question. Have any of you in this room ever asked God a question? And do you like the answer sometimes? No. Well, I didn't like the answer. This is what he said. I saved your life because you're going to preach my word. You know what I said back? Amen. Oh, Lord, you're so right. I said, no. I'm not going to preach your word. You know what I told him, Leslie? I don't talk in front of people. I said, I don't do that. And there's some people who knew me before. I would talk like this all the time, covering my mouth because of all the pain and surgeries I had. I was like, who are you, almighty God, who just cast out God, maybe a horde of demons out of me, got me delivered from drugs and alcohol, and I said, I wish I would have died. And he said, no, I saved your life so you might preach my word. And I said, no. No. And he said, you will. <laughs> I laughed, sure. 
And you can see right now who won. <laughs> Ananias was in that position, people. Can you imagine? He's telling God Almighty, who he believes is the risen Lord. He knows Jesus has died, rose again. He's living on the throne right now. And he tells God what's really going on with Saul. You haven't caught that? God who knows everything. So he goes, Ananias goes, but Lord, this is the man who's doing all these bad things. He, he's killing your people, Lord. Just think. Come in, God, Jesus in heaven going, go ahead, Ananias. Give me your excuses. You know what he says? Go ahead, by your Christ. Give me your excuses. But get, you want to know something? He doesn't change his mind. It says, God is not like man that he changes his mind. Scripture. So when he speaks to you about something, see, he won't change his mind. He doesn't forget. Because what he says, he doesn't back off of. He's waiting for us to come under that authority to fulfill his will in our lives. And he, so he gives him that there's a vision of this man. And Lord, I've heard about that man. How much harm he's done to your saints. You don't think God didn't know what happened to Stephen? Don't you think that he watched Stephen get stoned to death? Because Stephen said on his knees, heaven has opened. I see the Lord standing up. That testimony had to go out. But how quick we are to say, God, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you don't understand, God. And the whole time he sits there in so much love and peace and grace. <sighs> okay. I'm not going to change my mind, John. So on February 20th, 1987, he called me to be a preacher. And then I said no. And he said, you will. And then began the battle. And you see who won. So what happened for years ahead, all of a sudden, somebody walk up and says, I don't know what this means, but I see fire coming out of your throat and out of your mouth. And, I, and you know how when people give you words, you don't want to believe them because you know they're true. Um, really? I don't know what that means. I was getting surrounded by God. You understand? See, what God wants to do on Father's Day, the Father wants to surround you today. He wants to surround you because, see, the title of the sermon is what? Oh. You think it's just about Ananias and Saul? No. Y'all been brought in because you're chosen. And then he goes to explain to Christ. Oh, by the way, you know, he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. And Jesus, I mean, just, you know how patient he is with us? Okay, Ananias, thank you for telling me what's going on on earth. Thank you very much. I know that you believe I'm on the throne and Father's given me all power in heaven and earth and I'm the risen God, and I'm king of kings and lord of lords. You know all that, but now you're explaining to me what's going on on earth. I want you now to begin to think about that for a moment in your own life. How much you know what you're supposed to do, but who am I? Why me? I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I got a scripture for that. And by the way, God, have someone else do it as Jackie would say. <laughs> See? Brandon ran for so long, he grew his hair long. I mean, serious. His hair was like, he wanted to have hair like his bride now, and, and thought he could have long hair, drop his head, cover his face, that God wouldn't see him. And God goes, young man, 
He would come to church, hear God, and run and run and run. And when he was out of breath, God goes, hey, I'm here. Every time. So if you all want to get up and run right now, go ahead and run. Do it. Let's do it right now. Why don't we all run out and say, oh, God, we're not going to hear you today. But you know what's going to happen? He's going to come back tomorrow. And you go, oh, by the way, I'm back. Well, why don't you leave me alone? Because I had a plan for every one of you before the foundation of the world. I knew all of you before the foundation. I had this plan working out, and you guys are just a little slow on the uptake. So the Lord said, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings and children of Israel. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Isn't that good that God didn't tell Saul that? <laughs> he told Ananias, this guy's mine. He's going to do a work for me, but he's going to pay a high price. And Saul, who became Paul, paid the highest price. If you knew his journey, what he went through because of his disobedience in the beginning. So all of us here have something that God wants you to do. And all of us, at one time or another, told God, mm, I don't think so. No. I'm not going to go on the mission field. Nope. Just because my mom told me I was, I'm not going to do it. Nope, I'm not going to do it. She would even come and take a flight to get away from God to California, hoping that this pastor friend of hers would tell her she wouldn't have to go on a mission. It didn't quite work out that way. So then she thought she was going to go to Paris. And minister to those French people because they need to be saved. I remember that one. I try not to laugh too hard on that one. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that was a good excuse, uh huh. So, where'd she end up? Djibouti. Djibouti. See, God had a plan. And when we surrender early, it becomes a lot easier on us. I'm a witness to that. I didn't surrender in high school. I turned to drugs. But he never quit and changed his plan. I grieve over the years I lost serving God. I grieve over the sin I did in those years and the failures that I had in my life. What I'm saying to all of you here is, today is Father's Day on earth, but it's a Father's Day every day in heaven who never changes his mind about you and how much he loves you and has a plan for you and wants to use you to glorify his son. And as you glorify his son, he will fill you with your, the glory and give you good things. He might even save your life when you might be dying. This might do that. So Paul, who was Saul at the time, is waiting, praying. The guy had an encounter. He hadn't ate or drank in three days. I'm glad that maybe, I'm still praying that at my age I don't have to do any long fast. I'm trying to get confirmation from doctors and everybody so I don't have to hear God. <laughs> to say, well, at your age, sir, you probably shouldn't do any long fast. You know, take out the hearing aids. I didn't hear you, God. So I showed up. He obeyed God. Can you imagine? Put yourself in this. This is a guy that wants to body slam me with rocks. Because Stephen was stoned. That's a heck of a way to die, especially if they're little rocks. 
get a big one, a big two-tonger, and get it done at one time, you know. And so he's going into this house realizing he has to trust what God has said. He has to really believe what God has said. You understand? Because he's going in, and if he didn't hear God, he's dead. Everybody who was a believer in Damascus knew Saul was on his way. And you want to understand, it was set up in the Roman government that the Jewish authorities had the right to do this. It was like a self-governing of the Jewish people that the Caesars gave him permission to do this so there wouldn't be a revolt against Rome, that they could keep their religion in a way and keep it so there wouldn't be a revolt. So actually a Caesar had signed a paper saying that the Jews could do this. So when he had authority from the high priest to go do this, he had the whole backing of the Roman Empire who hated Christ. That's what was coming into Damascus. And now Ananias has to walk into that house believing that God spoke. So when I happen to give a couple prophetic words to a couple people today, that's why I asked them, does that make sense to your life? And if they said yes, now it's not my fault. If they said no, you're all wet, pastor, I'd have to repent. Okay? But when they both were sitting there crying, not in their heads, now it ain't my responsibility. It's between them and God. So when I've given you words and given you words and given words over here, once I give them, if it's God, then I'm out of the picture. And when you go, oh, yeah, Pastor, that was a good word. Yeah, you're right. And you think it's about me. It ain't about me. It's never about me. Everything's about Christ. So, he goes in like he was told to do, and he laid hands on him. Now, we as Christians, this is our enemy, right? So, Brandon now, you know, here's this guy that when he happened not to be totally walking with God, who, I'll bring up a, not a deep story because we're online, he walked into a house where there were some guys there that, might be carrying, and they want to, and now God says, you go to that guy, and you pray for him and lead him to Jesus. I don't know. Did I hear God? Maybe not. I don't know. And I just walked in in faith. He put his hands upon him. The man saw God healed, his eyesight came back, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. In one of the commentaries I read this week, they said the two major things in Christianity was the resurrection of the Lord and the salvation of Paul. That changed the whole world. Because, see, he was a missionary, and he went out, wrote 13 books of the Bible, was a leader of the church. Just think, we don't know what one mission that God sends us on is going to change the world. So here's Ananias that we hear about him, and he obeyed God, and he went and laid hands on Saul. He got healed. He could see. He got filled with the Spirit of God, and out went the apostle who traveled and started churches all over the Middle East, all over Greece, they say he went to Spain and started the church all over. Because one man heard God, heard his name, heard what God said, and said, okay, yes, Lord. How many are you tired of seeing ODs come up every week on Red Buff Rundown and on Facebook? Every week. Every week. Rex, death. Kids so confused about who they are, they don't even know what sex they are or what identity they are. 
And we have all this going on, and we're all fret about it, and the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and we're all concerned about it. But will we be the people of God who ask to hear from God, tell me what you want me to do when I do it? You might be the one person at the one time to bring one salvation to one person who will have an anointing that might save millions. James Roberson, a preacher, his mom got pregnant at 15 by rape. She didn't have an abortion. And that man now ministers to millions. No one would know. See, we all want the big preacher to come in and do this dynamic thing. I guarantee you, if we had Heidi Baker in here in three weeks, there wouldn't be a chair empty. And we want Heidi Baker to release this anointing on her that... She gets because she spins her face right there in Jesus' face. And we'd pack out the house so we might receive something. So we might see revival. You are the revivalist sitting right in front of me. You're the ones that can change the world. You're the ones that can do it. Because it takes the voice of God to speak and for you to say, here I am. And then you don't do what I did. For four or five years. Who am I? And I fight those words today. I fight them every day. Who am I? He does these things through me that I can see scripture when I shouldn't be able to see. And I, you know what I do? Why God? Instead of saying, thank you God, you're making a proclamation. See, all of us are in this boat together. I don't know about you, but I want people not to die and go to hell. Can I get an amen? amen. I don't want to see marriages destroyed anymore. Amen? Amen? I don't want people who go to school and they get drugged into all kinds of crap, 14, 15-year-olds, that by the time they graduate, they have no hope, no desire to do anything but get high and play video games. If you don't like the scripture, I'm going to give you the sermon. I'm not, pick, yeah. I'm not picking on you people. I'm calling you. Because remember, when God called me, I said no. And I would go to different places and people continued to prophesy over me. I don't know why. I just see you preaching the word. Oh, I don't know why. I see this fire all over you. I don't know why. And I'm going... My, 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 I'm not here and I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to listen. I don't want to be a preacher. I don't want to talk in front of people. You know, I don't talk in front of people. You know, I don't do these things. Then one crazy day, I'm at prayer. Eight in the morning, the church I was going to. And the Lord says, I want you to go to Reading, to Bethel. And this is before the new building, before Bill Johnson was there. And I go, Lord, I've already been to church. It looked kind of weird not to show up. He said, I called you to go to Reading. Okay. So I load up the family. We go to Bethel. And there's about a 1,000 people there. And I'm sitting there, and there's a missionary from Ecuador. I'll never forget Ecuador. I'll never for, I don't remember the guy. And, and praise God, he might be an awesome missionary, but he surely was boring as anybody I ever heard in my life. And I'm going, what do you want me here for? I thought it was to hear a message. No, see, we begin to surmise what God wants when he tells us to do something. So I'm sitting there, and then the pastor gets up, kind of like what happened to two girls today, gets up and says, I got this word. 
there's someone here who's being called to the ministry to be a preacher, and they need to come forward and let me lay hands on them and impart in them the call of God. Well, right away, it can't be me, because there's a thousand people there. So I'm sitting there, and next thing I know, I'm starting to shake a little bit. And then he goes on, and he goes, oh, this word won't leave me alone. Uh, you're, you're in your 30s. You believe because you haven't been biblically trained that you, you're not called. Come forward. It can't be me. <laughs> Third time. I, and now this guy is reading my mail. No, God is. Telling me my life secret. And I'm telling you right now, you need to get up and you need to come down here and let God fill you with the Spirit of God. Now, I think I'm going to die. I feel like my whole body is going to explode if I don't do it. I crawl over the top of people, run down, dive on the floor. I'm weeping like a baby. He comes up, puts his hands on me, and begins to pray and release the anointing. I get up, he looks at me, he goes, uh, it's you, but I thought it was somebody else. No, it's me. He said, fine, when this amount of years you're going to be a full-time pastor. And I was. So I understand why you guys do what you do sometimes, because I do it better than anybody. I'm volunteering to put myself ahead of the line that I fight God all the time. So I prayed this morning. I said, you know what, God? I want to prophesy today. Not knowing who would be here. I just want to hear God clear. And man, I heard. Should I ever hear? I got vision with it even. Because you know what? People tell me all the time about my gift. And all the time I say, well, maybe. Well, don't say that. I prophesy because I'm a prophet. See, put up Galatians, please. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. He writes in Galatians, let everybody know why he's an apostle. I was called personally by God. God is such a humorous God. On Facebook, you're going to see the post I put up out of Malachi 4 today. It came up on my you version? <laughs> and I get up and I'm like put on there and I go, okay, God, what are you going to say? What scripture today? Okay, Lord, show me what scripture. It's the scripture I was called in the ministry. He just won't leave you alone because he hasn't left me alone. And this is what was prophesied over me out of a thousand people in Vallejo. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the father. At least I strike the earth with a curse. And who? Elijah, the prophet. That was by chance, wasn't it? No. There's nothing by chance with God. He's not lucky. He doesn't throw things out. No. Okay? And so, you might wonder, that's nice, Pastor, but Megan's saying, I'm not called to be a preacher. She's going, Phew. Eli can run all he wants from the call of God in his life, but every time he gets so far away, he gets pulled back. There's two women sitting here today that I saw them come in. My heart went, you're doing it, God. I know what I've been praying. I know what he's been praying. 
He's starting to answer those prayers. I'm a little nervous because some of us over the age of 45 are going to get real nervous. Because the young ones are going to come like a flood. Amen. So you might ask, Pastor, you're just giving this message. Could you give us a scripture to prove it? Put up 1 Corinthians, please. You guys ready? Okay, you're not quite ready. You ready? Thank you. Entertain me. It's Father's Day. You ready? For you see your calling. I can hear something's not right. Did I put the right scriptures in? Well, you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise, according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame, to put to shame the mighty. And the insignificant things of the world, the things which are despised, God has chosen. The things which are not to bring to nothing that things are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are Christ Jesus, who became of his wisdom from God and righteousness, sanctification, redemption is written. He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Do you understand that passage? I'm going to tell it to you a little bit. Not many what? Mighty. Hmm. Not many noble. Hmm. Are called. In other words, he's not looking for people with graduate school from Harvard University to be his leaders. Thank God. He's not looking for people who think they're something. He's looking for people that the world would never recognize as something. He's looking for someone who will say, here I am. That's it. And usually the prideful ones would go, I really don't need a God. You know, I'm making a million a year. What the heck do I need? Oh, yeah, I'm a politician and I've been elected to Congress. I don't need God. Oh, hey, I'm a pro golfer. What the heck? I'm making about 10 million a year. I don't need God. Oh, I'm president of something, something. I'm noble. I'm good. I'm powerful. But God says, you know what? I don't choose them. He wants to save them. He chooses you and me. He chose a man who had his tongue cut out who couldn't talk. He chose a man who dealt drugs, did drugs, and did things he can't even speak in public. But see, I did that running from God, but he never quit chasing me. So I don't care where you've been, where you're at right now. It's what you do today that starts something new. It's Father's Day. The Father in heaven saying, I know each one of you and you're awesome and mighty and wonderfully made. I knew you before the foundation of the world. I loved you before that foundation, and that love has never changed. The world may have put you down. You may have been beaten, squalored, hurt, and all the things about you, but that didn't change who I thought you were. The world tried to outdo my work, but no one can outdo my work. No darkness can destroy a life that I can't redeem. No darkness can lie to a mind that I can't heal. Darkness can do what it thinks it can do, but nothing can do what I can do because I'm the creator God who can make all things new. Not many mighty, not many noble. 
But all are called. Listen for the voice of God today. You may think it's easy for me to hear something and not know somebody and don't want to chase them away. Did I say it wrong? They may never go back to church. It's not easy to tell people you're more than you think you are when I look in your eyes and you're saying, but what about this? Something is coming. And it's a glorification of the broken ones who say, yes, I'm here. And when you in this room <coughs> say, yes, I'm here, you won't believe what's going to begin to happen to you. First thing that's going to happen, you're going to know a love you never knew the depth of. And it was just for you. He's not calling you as just to use you. He's calling you out of love that you might know what you were made to be. See, he's not a God that uses you like the devil. He's a God that fills you, loves you, and then empowers you to glorify his name. He's not a God who just throws you aside once you make a mistake. The blood in heaven continues to flow. He's going to start something, and once he started it, he's going to finish it. First Philippians, Philippians 1, verse 6. That which I started in you, I will finish. I don't know about you, but the God who made heaven and all the stars says something. All creation hears it. All creation's waiting for you as sons and daughters of God to come forth and release life. You're chosen. Every one of you in this room. Maybe differently, it doesn't matter. The day is coming, the Lord says, that I'm going to take those that don't go to church that think they're walking with me, they're going to meet a hard road. They're going to meet a hard thing because they think they can do it without the body of Christ. You're all living stones and you're meant to be put together and filed down when you get close together. You're a family of God and the king says you're my family and when you love each other and love him, mighty things will happen because the world is full of hate and division and misery and they're looking for a church named Jesus Christ that will love people in a way they've never been loved and never be restored. It doesn't mean when you sin you don't repent. It doesn't mean when you're wrong you don't say you're wrong but it means when you're wrong and you're made right by God then you're forgiven and the house of God becomes holy. The critter is pissed. Each of us have gifts. I have a unique gift. I hear God and I hear second heaven. I pray that none of you have that gift. Sometimes a critter likes to hang off my eye socket. Like he is right now. He's angry. Second heaven is angry right now. Because the word of God is going out. The word of God is going to be fulfilled. The, the, those who are not noble and rich and mighty are going to go out and save the rich and the mighty. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> oh no, I'm talking to myself. Okay, Lord. Once that fear is removed and that terror is removed, the Lord said you're going to find peace. You've been looking for her since you were six years old. And he said, you've looked every which way but loose. But he says, today, I finally have you where I want you, where I can give you a hug and take away all that pain and all that hurt.
because he says, you are meant to be a glorious bride of Christ. I'm going to pray a prayer. Give me a different prayer. You wondered, didn't you? Man. Sometimes, Pastor Mike, I don't understand why the guy don't like me. He once had me. You think, why does he want to get so upset with me now? I don't get it. I used to do his bidding. I changed teams. Okay. Another time. Stand up. I'm going to pray a prayer. This is going to be a wild one, too. Ha! You okay, hon? Does that make any sense to your life? Okay. Before you run out, I'd like to pray for you and bless you. Is that okay? Okay. All right. And you can get some, too. Okay. Everybody can get some. This is going to be a different prayer. <laughs> yeah, well. See, once a month for 15 years, me and Pastor Mike, Pastor Paul Sr. and Pastor Paul Jr. have got gathered and prayed. Mostly at Richardson Springs, and we call for revival and call for things. Oh, man. He <laughs> gets fired up. Stand with me, Lord. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I'll explain when I'm done. Okay? Jesus Christ, I come to you, and in your name I ask, Father, fill the powder keg full. Fill that powder keg so full, Lord, that you will come and ignite it and cause an explosion in this city. And I ask now, Lord, as that powder keg goes off, there will be no yelling in the body of Christ that we will read the road signs of the Lord that takes us to his throne room, and then we will stand ringside next to you, Lord, and see you win the battle that is going on. I ask, Lord, you release that right now in the spirit. Now, Lord, when you're ready to ignite that powder keg, we will be faithful and not be yo-yoing anymore in unbelief. But, Lord, we will then watch the sign from heaven that the road will be laid before us, that we will walk and fulfill the will of God, and then we'll watch it ringside and watch the enemy defeated, and the rule over this land will be broken, and Christ shall rule here. In Jesus' holy name. And if Everybody said, Amen. Amen. (laughs) You know what that's about? Someone gives us, when we gather for prayer, someone gives us a word that we're supposed to decipher, hear God about, and pray. But This person didn't give us one word. They gave us four words. Powder keg. Yo-yo. Road signs. Ringside. And the Lord told me this morning to release that word in prayer. And what that means is that powder keg is a all of us being filled with the glory of God. And when the touch, like this, if the touch of God comes, Donna, and you're a powder keg, and he's the igniter, he can come and go, and ignite it, and you're exploding all over the place. And then as you explode, Donna, then he says, I don't want you to yo-yo back and forth in what I showed you. And then he says, but then, and I said, you're not yo-yoing. I want you to see the signs on the road that lead you to my glory. And as you're in my glory, watch me defeat the enemy of the land. Boom. That's what that kind of means. Amen. (laughs) 
She, she's thinking. How y'all doing? Good. Just think about this. The Father has released a prophetic anointing over you today. Whether you understand it or not, that's not the point. Once it's released, eventually you're going to get it if you don't get it today because it's landing on you. Amen? So, um, I'm just waiting for instructions, okay? It's true, Jackie, that the Lord said all that you tried to harvest before seemed to get lost along the way. But he says, because you're a gatherer, according to Scripture that was put before you that time when you put your finger on it and opened the Bible. I can't even remember the verse, but I remember what it said. It said, you are a gatherer of people. And so you did it, and you didn't understand it. You weren't quite where you maybe needed to be in high school. <laughs> <laughs> But he said, because I gave you that scripture, he said, today it's going to be fulfilled. You're going to begin the gathering all over again. And you may go back and you're going to start running into people that there were once in that car, ate pizza, were monkeys on, out of the crazies and all that was going on. But they're going to come back around because they were touched at one time. And you're going to begin to pray the seed that was put into them would come forth again and they would be saved. Does someone have pain in their left leg at all? Kind of high. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to lay my hands on you where it's at. Um, <laughs> just put your hands out and close your eyes. Pain, begin to go off of them right now. Go. Pain be released. Go. There, there, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Pain gone. Pain gone. Hallelujah. It's not quite gone. Go in Jesus' name. <laughs> JD, let go. Uh, you did it with a straining effort. You heard it strain, lifting something. Shh. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed. If you don't know what that, that's biblical. It's called a word of, a word of knowledge, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, okay? Just in case you at home don't know we're biblical. Just cutting down the fire before it starts firing. Amen? How y'all doing? Father's Day. Does that make any sense, Jackie? Have names been coming back into your head again of people? Huh? Oh, we got people. <laughs> Okay, all right. Cool beans. Okay. Is that better? Cool. How about you, Jill? Huh? You okay? You all right? Come out of the shadows. No more hidden. No more hidden. Come out of the shadow. When I was given the scripture, the Lord says about not many noble, not many wise, your heart began to pound. And he says, yes, that was me telling you, get ready for what I'm about to do. Thank you, Chris. Heaven's open, Brandon. Heaven's open. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you that Ananias obeyed. Saul's eyes were healed. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the rest is biblical history. And so I ask today, I ask today 
that you would speak their names. Maybe it's Chrissy. Maybe it's Adriana. Maybe it's Carmen. Maybe it's Kenny. You know he's saying Leslie. Maybe he's saying Cage. Maybe he's saying Jan. Maybe he's saying Al. Oh, he's saying I'm calling all of them by name. And so, Father, I thank you. Your word was confirmed today in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Now I ask that each person here would give me a blessing for Father's Day. That I might receive, release the Father blessing in their life. That I might just release heaven from my Heavenly Father to them. I ask this in Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Could you all come forward if you desire? So I can release a blessing over you. I behaved.